This is worksheet one of the covalent compounds packet. And the first thing that we are going to learn how to do in this packet is to name covalent compounds. So we have to kind of switch our mindset here. The last packet was all about compounds containing a metal and a nonmetal, but this packet is going to be about compounds made of two nonmetals. Uh, so we have a different way to name them, and when we talk about their bonds, uh, the bonds work a little bit differently, and so we have different ways of drawing pictures of them. So the first thing to um, shift to here as we name them is that we're not going to use oxidation numbers anymore to come up with the formulas um, of these compounds because nonmetals all have negative charges and so the reason that they bond to each other does not have to do with an attraction between a positive and a negative charge um, and the charges are not neutralizing and we'll worry about why when we start drawing pictures of them okay um, but what we're going to use now instead is we're going to use what are called prefixes to tell us how many of each atom we have and so these are the prefixes um, which you don't need to memorize. Some of you will find it easier to do that, but they will be provided on tests and quizzes. So one means, or mono means one, and di means two, and so on and so forth, all the way up to deca meaning ten. All right, and, and the reason that we have to use prefixes is this. Um, if we think about, for example, nitrogen and oxygen bonding together, okay, nitrogen and oxygen are both nonmetals, they're both negatively charged, and sometimes what happens is we get one nitrogen and one oxygen combining. And sometimes what happens in under different conditions is we'll get two nitrogens and one oxygen bonding together. Now, if we use the ionic bond naming method that we learned in the previous packet, um, both of these would be called nitrogen oxide. And so if I call asked you to use nitrogen oxide in a lab, you wouldn't know if you should get the NO or the N2O, and they're actually really different compounds with really different properties. So to distinguish, um, we use prefixes. So N2O is called dinitrogen monoxide. Why? Because Di means two, and there are two nitrogens, and mono means one, and there's one oxygen. Okay, note that the second compound we still put the IDE ending on. Not the first one, though. The first one is just nitrogen. Okay? Um, and NO would then be, which is different, nitrogen monoxide. Not dinitrogen, because we don't have two nitrogens. All right, now you're probably, if you're paying attention, wondering why wouldn't you call it mononitrogen monoxide, right? There's one nitrogen and one oxygen, so they should both have prefixes of mono. Okay, well, this is a weird little exception to the rule. We never start a compound with the prefix mono. So if there's one of the first element, like here there's one nitrogen, we just say nitrogen, not mononitrogen. But if there's one of the second element, we do use the mono prefix. We call it monoxide. I have no really good explanation for why that is. It's just a convention. Okay, so here are some examples, and then I want you to fill in the rest. Um, for our first formula, we have two nitrogens, so that's dinitrogen, and we have four oxygens, so it's tetraoxide. Don't forget to still put the IDE ending on. Okay? All right, so uh, go ahead and see if you can fill the rest of those in, and then we will check your work when you get to class next.